The year is 1964. The US and Russia are at the height of the Cold War. Tokyo just hosted the 18th Summer Olympics. The Beatles were on tour in America. And the Civil Rights Act was just signed into US law. But what didn't make the front page news was the creation of the Zambian space program. Yeah, like the poor African nation of Zambia going to space in a barrel that would be launched from a slingshot. Now hold your judgment. It all started when a well-educated middle school teacher went on an airplane for the first time and asked the pilots if they could pull over so he could get out and walk on the clouds. Well, they refused, obviously, but prompted him to create the Zambian National Academy of Science, Space, Research, and Philosophy in 1964, shortly after the country gained its independence. That man was named Edward Makuka Nkoloso. I'll just call him Eddie for now. Shortly after the program's launch, Eddie recruited a bunch of young Zambians for the task of going to Mars with a space girl, two cats, and a missionary. The reason for the missionary was because Eddie believed that Mars was inhabited by primitive natives. But he did warn them that they must not force Christianity on people if they did not want it. Training for this whole space endeavor consisted of rolling each other down hills in barrels and jumping off makeshift swings to simulate zero gravity. Make no mistake, Eddie was no dumb guy or anything. He was a well-educated visionary ahead of his time. He just didn't have quite the same resources to get his program off the ground. He even went as far as pressuring the government for funding and seeking outside investment. Unfortunately, the only capital he could acquire was a donation of 10 rupees from a young space-minded schoolboy in India. Other countries didn't send any money or anything, but they were kind enough to send books about space and rocket ships to poor Eddie. Sadly though, the Zambian space program had to be shut down. Two of his astronauts, a phrase he came up with, went on a drinking spree and never returned. His space girl got pregnant and was taken away by her parents. Eddie eventually went on to say that he dismantled his Cyclops 1 rocket to stop foreign powers from stealing his secrets, which he deemed to be space worthy and saying that it was made from copper and stainless steel. Sadly, Eddie didn't succeed after the closing of his beloved program. He tried to run for mayor of Lusaka, tried to advocate support for witch doctors, and retired in 1972. Over the years, he was called an amiable lunatic, a court jester, and Zambia's village idiot. Eddie died on March 4th, 1989, but was buried with presidential honors. Edward, Makuka, and Coloso was an eccentric visionary and an early pioneer of Afrofuturism. He was a patriot to his newly formed nation and wanted the world to be proud of Zambia one day. In an interview he said, Some people think I'm crazy, but I'll be laughing the day I plant Zambia's flag on the moon. The capital of the new scientific Zambia must look beautiful. People from afar must not see it as a slum of the capital, but the greatest scientific state. Zambians are inferior to no man in science and technology. My space program will surely be carried out. The world needs more people like Eddie. The man was not afraid to take risks and challenge the status quo. A true underdog story of a man with passion and perseverance. He sacrificed his reputation and became a laughingstock to the entire world. But that didn't stop him from achieving his dreams, even if it was a successful failure and nobody got hurt. Rest in peace, Eddie. You're a true legend and an inspiration.